today we are doing a review, an honest review, of three products I purchased with my own money and been using for a few months now. No partnerships, no sponsorships. This is an honest opinion. Let's get into it. We are going with a Ryobi, a Royobi, 40 volt cordless battery power chainsaw, Husqvarna chainsaw pants, and a Chicago Electric electric chainsaw chain sharpener. Now, before we get started, this is a formal review, so one second. Figured I'd put my nice formal attire on for you guys so we can talk about it. Now, let's get into this Ryobi chainsaw. All right, so let's take a closer look at the Ryobi, Royobi, however you wanna say it, 40 volt cordless battery powered chainsaw. Now, I'm not the kind of guy, I'm not married to a specific brand. I kinda just pick what I think is best or what is most convenient for me. And in this case, it was convenience. I had an awesome subscriber named Keith L who sent me a Ryobi leaf blower and two 40 volt batteries two chargers to go with it and because I already had the batteries and chargers I got on Amazon and I ordered a bare tool 40 volt cordless chainsaw and I really really have been impressed with this thing all right so let's go over the basic features of this saw obviously there's the 40 volt lithium-ion battery there like most modern tools it has the battery level indicator conveniently located slides right in and out of here which is a pretty good location it feels pretty balanced there has a little chainsaw wrench that comes with it, conveniently located, and it's a pretty snug fit. We do end up using this later because I do lose the chain when I'm making a demonstration, but two bar studs right there, and then just like the normal chainsaw tensioner, a little flathead there to tension the chain up. This is a 14 inch bar. I believe they also have a 10 inch version as well. It's a little bit smaller saw. And then of course up front has the bar oil reservoir right there. Nothing fancy, simple cap, works great. And one thing I do like about this, the charger does have a place for USB attachments. Now that's where the charger port plugs in, but then it has a USB outlet right there. So sometimes when the power goes out at the house, we'll actually have been using these batteries to charge our accessories like our phones and that kind of thing. So that's kind of handy as well to have around the house. It does have a trigger safety. You have to pull that top one back, otherwise you can't squeeze the trigger. Pretty common on most electric power tools these days. Now the whole reason we got this saw in the beginning was for vine maintenance, to kind of remove vines around the property. Here's some honeysuckle and grapevine all put together. And then believe it or not, this next one is actually just honeysuckle on a dead redbud tree. So that's all that is there. But that's what we got it. Just do a little trimming and you kind of see you know just the convenience of walking around the woods with just having to carry that was pretty nice but as we got comfortable with the capabilities of the saw we started using it to kind of cut some of this firewood up we'll let a few of these clips run so you can just kind of see how it does in real time performance Now, one thing about the chain, it has a style chain on it that prevents you from doing plunge cuts. It's just supposed to be a safer version of a chain, which makes sense. This is kind of considered a homeowner saw that somebody would get just to kind of trim trees. So it does have a, I'm gonna call it a safety chain style on there. You can see it just kind of smokes it out. It just really won't go in that way. So you could always switch chains, maybe grind it off, switch it up if you wanted to. But here, I'm just kind of trimming some vines around this tree and we're gonna cut this dead tree around, cut this dead tree down rather, but, uh, sure enough, the chain actually came off, which is the first time it came off since I've used it. And if you just pay attention to your chain tension, that really shouldn't happen. But, uh, you know, we were making a video today and I wasn't really paying attention to my chain tension. 
but with the wrench handy there, we got it back on in no time, and we're gonna get this tree cut down. Now, a few things I wanna say. This still will not replace uh, the gas saw that I have. I have just a very small Husqvarna 440. It, it won't replace that saw. I still use that saw if I'm gonna go out and cut trees down, bigger trees. You know, this is a pretty small dead tree. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Hold on. If I'm gonna go out and cut bigger trees down, I'm still using the gas saw. So if you buy this model saw to replace your gas saw, you're gonna be disappointed. But if you bought it like I did, just to trim limbs every now and then, it's really gonna exceed your expectations. And I've started using it for stuff like this more and more. Now there are some companies like Still and Husqvarna that do make battery powered chainsaws that are bigger and designed to replace gas powered saws. In fact, Husqvarna actually has this model here that actually has that battery backpack, which is pretty wild. So I'm assuming you can probably get quite a bit of cut time out of that, and that may replace a gas saw, but it's also considerably more expensive. So like I said, for me, this does not replace the gas saw, but it does absolutely accompany that gas saw really well. You saw it the other day. I took it with me just to trim limbs up after I used the gas saw to get some of the trees on the ground. Very handy. For our homestead, it's absolutely perfect. So let's talk about the pros, and I'm not specific to this brand. Again, I'm just speaking the pros of a general battery-powered cordless chainsaw. It's quiet. You use this thing, you pull the trigger, you let off, and you hear everything around you. When I use this in the woods, going through trimming trees or cutting up vines, it feels like I'm still hiking. I don't feel like I'm working because I don't have the noise and the decibels of a gas saw, which I like. Now, like I mentioned in the voiceover section of this, this will not replace the gas saw but I have been going to it more and more for the things I need. That being said, as far as cons go, none. I have, <laughs> I wish I did. I wish I could tell you one bad thing about this saw, but I can't. Uh, I don't know how well it's gonna hold up over time. I've used it in wet weather. I've used it in rain. I've used it in mud. I have dropped a tree on it on accident. I have been splitting wood and split a bunch of wood and ended up underneath the pile because I wasn't paying attention. I've been pretty, I'm not gonna say abusive, but uh, I've definitely tested the durability of it for the few months I've had it. I have no cons, I have no complaints about this specific saw. And uh, when it comes to battery powered saws in general, I'm in love with the idea of it. I truly, truly am. If you guys have a battery powered saw, tell me what it is and tell me if you like it and leave it in the comments. But for now, we're moving on to the next review. So the next thing we're gonna talk about are these Husqvarna technical chainsaw chaps. Now you can spend as little as $50 for leg protection, and you can go all the way up over $200 for leg protection. I kind of picked the middle ground. Here's the link, or here's the picture of what I actually bought and the price on Amazon.com. Again, I'll put the link in the description if you're curious. I went the middle ground. I wanted leg protection, but I didn't want to be uncomfortable. And here's a few of the features that I do really like about these pants. All right, so one thing I absolutely love about these pants is this pocket. Now, me personally, I keep my phone in there. I'm sure there's a specific reason that pocket is there, but it's your pocket, so you put whatever you want to in that pocket. I use my phone in there because if I'm out in the woods, which normally I am by myself in the woods, I have quick, easy access to my phone if I need to call for help, just in case something goes haywire. Also, with the way that flap is designed on top of that pocket, it does a great job of keeping sawdust out, even obnoxious amounts like that. See, phone clean. One thing I used to keep in my box, which now I can keep on my person because of these pants as well, is a cat tourniquet. By the way, if you don't have a cat tourniquet, I highly recommend you picking one up. You never know when you're gonna need one and they're pretty daggone inexpensive. That way, whenever you accidentally mess up and you slice into your leg, Dang it. you got quick, easy access with this second pocket. Again, there's probably a specific reason for that pocket, but I'm putting a tourniquet in mind. You slap your tourniquet on, you're good to go back to work. Now, this is obviously, okay, disclaimer time. Obviously, this is a joke. If you have to apply a tourniquet, you don't go back to work and go to the hospital. Also, I highly recommend you slide it up as far as you can in your groin there to get as close to your femoral artery as you can, and that way you're not going around as much chap and clothing to apply that tourniquet. That's just my personal opinion. Really, you do it however you want. I just have to disclaim, that's a joke, and, uh, you know, on with the show. 
Another feature I love is this calf protection and just the way it wraps around the calf with those three straps. A big pet peeve I saw with a bunch of different brands is that they're almost like a big old fat bat wing flapping around at the bottom and almost a trip hazard. But the way this fits snugly around there, I really like the way it fits. The only complaint I really have is the waist strap. It's maybe a one inch, one and a half inch webbing, if that, and it does kind of start to chew into my skin a little bit, even with two shirts on. And coming into the summertime with just being in a t-shirt, it's probably gonna chew a little bit more. So I may have to do something to kind of tweak that a little bit. And it's got this really cheap plastic clip buckle, which kind of bites into me a little bit as well. Pockets, who doesn't love pockets? The calf protection all the way around, which I think also makes them more maneuverable in general because you don't feel like you have this big bat wing hanging around down here. It's nice and tight on your legs. Uh, I do, I just like them. They are very comfortable. Cons though, again, like I said, the waist belt. It's really thin. However, in the future, I may look at getting a set of suspenders because I like to get a little wedge pouch and that kind of thing to go with it. Overall, love these pants. Very happy with this purchase. We'll continue to use these. And if I ever wear these out, I'll probably pick up another set just like it. All right, now, time for Chicago Electric. All right, let's talk about the Chicago Electric Sharpener. Now, I posted in the video that I had purchased this, and I got a lot of, let's call it feedback in the comments, so much so that a gentleman is actually sending me a 12-volt electric sharpener that I can take out in the woods with me and hook up to the tractor. I was hoping it would be in by this video, but it's not. If you want to see that in action, though, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, Get notifications of upcoming videos and you'll see that in action however when it comes to this i got this for a very very specific purpose and it's pretty simple i do hand file i keep two round files in my box so i can field dress i also keep a flat file so i can keep my rakers knocked down When it comes to this, I got it for a specific reason. I would typically get about a quarter of a way, on an optimistic note, halfway through the life of a chain before my angles would be so far off, the chain was pretty much useless. Yeah, I could put the bar up in a vise and I could spend a significant amount of time trying to chase those angles and get it back perfect. But I kind of got tired of doing that. And for the price of this, which I'll put it up right here, the eBay price that I paid for it from Harbor Freight themselves, you just can't beat it. Will this replace a hand file? No, not even close. Will it replace the handiness and the convenience of that 12 volt sharpener that gentleman's sending us? Nope, not even close. But will it provide me with a consistent clean angle that'll get longer life out of my chains? Yeah, absolutely. And that's the goal. Now, pros of this, consistent angles. Cons to this, it's got this thing right here. That's a 110 plug. don't have a lot of those out in the woods. Another con to this, if you don't mess with your settings here and all you do is just keep cranking the chain over and cutting it at the setting it's at, you're gonna eat up a lot of chain. Now, if you pay attention and you make your adjustments and you kind of take your time, it's not as much chain as some people are claiming, but nonetheless, you will eat up a chain faster. Still though, I will get longer life out of chains by not having to throw one away because I've messed up my angles so bad. And I know, there's going to be a lot of comments. You go watch Buck and Billy Ray, go watch so-and-so. They'll teach you how to sharpen a chain by hand. That's great. I just got this. You know what I mean? All right, so let's take a little closer look at this thing. It has an adjustable angle both ways, up to 35 degrees each direction. Underneath this housing, there's a little turn knob, so you can tighten it down and secure it. This knob here I'm turning through my hand. You can see it advances the chain. Then it has that little piece of metal that kind of flips down acts as a backstop to help hold the chain secure while you're tightening. Now that backstop is adjustable. You can kind of see on the left hand side of the screen, I'm adjusting that backstop and you can see it moving. Now that's what I was talking about. If you pay attention and you adjust that backstop while you're sharpening, you can, you can get away with just a little bit at a time. You're still eating more than you would with a hand file, but you're not taking a big old chunk out like I think some people think you do. Now this thing has a lot of adjustments on it and uh, this is actually the first time 
me running it here, and it takes a little bit of fine tuning to get it dialed in the way I want it. The biggest thing I had trouble with, and I'm not gonna say I had trouble with, what took me the most time was getting that chain break you see in the center of your screen, which holds the chain secure for you so it doesn't jump around while you're sharpening. And I'm squeezing right there, you saw it kind of going in and out. Getting that lined up or, or tuned in or however you want to say it, that took me the most time. But there's a lot of adjustment on it and a lot of options, so you can really get it exactly how you want it. Now this is what I'm talking about here as far as the angles going. This is a chain I've been hand filing, and it stays relatively sharp for me. But you can see I've gotten the angle off over time. So having this, I can go through and get all the angles uh, back to where they're supposed to be on this chain relatively quickly. And that's the exact reason I got this, so I'm pretty excited about it. Now you'll see on these first few that, that chain kind of pulls up a little bit while I'm sharpening. And that's what I'm talking about. I don't quite have that break adjusted uh, as well as I need to these first few rounds. In fact, I think it's the second or third tooth I go to that actually pulls that chain up and pulls it out of there. Do you see how it's kind of sticking up above that rail? It's supposed to sit down flush and tight on that rail. I think this is the one that kind of jumps on me. Yeah, there you go. See how it jumped on me. But you can see here how nice it's sitting there, sitting there nice and tight now. Everything's holding secure. Eventually I got it adjusted the way I wanted and it worked really well. Now one tip a lot of subscribers gave in the comments and I stuck with that tip is to just do short little bursts like this. Don't stay down in there. Otherwise you'll heat the tooth up and you'll damage the hardness of that tooth. So that's kind of what I stuck with, short little bursts like that. And as long as I watched the adjustment on the backstop, I wasn't taking uh, any more metal than I had to to get the angle back correctly. So pretty happy with the way this worked. Zipped right around there. I even threw the chain for the electric chainsaw on there as well and got both of them knocked out. I think it probably took total maybe 10, 15 minutes to get those cleaned up and the angles back to where they needed to be. And then you just flip it around like that and you do the other side. Easy peasy. You have to pay attention to what you're doing and I know this is probably the one that will get the most feedback in the comments and that's fine I understand a lot of you have very hard hard opinions about these electric sharpeners just hear me when I say I'm happy with it it works perfect for what I want it for and uh, well I'm glad I got it that's all I can say about this I'm gonna put my flannel back on real quick because uh, I feel ridiculous in this t-shirt and I have a few other things I want to talk to you about all right, so let's just sit and talk for a minute. Just to recap, that chainsaw, love it. I have no qualms at all about that saw, and I'm very happy I have it. As far as the chainsaw pants go, I love them too. I think if I get a set of suspenders and maybe a wedge pocket to go with it, I'll be fully set on those, and I'll be very happy with the way that gear is all set up. With the uh, uh, Chicago Electric Chainsaw Chain Sharpener, pretty happy with that too. It does the purpose I intended for it to do. And I think once I pick up a couple other chains for that saw, I'm really going to love it. I can sit down, clamp it to the workbench, run two or three chains through it and be done. Keep my angles clean, field dress it after each time I use it. And we should be good to go. Again, I have an awesome subscriber who sent a 12 volt sharpener and I'll give him a big old shout out on an upcoming video when I get that sharpener out and use it. So I'm pretty excited about that as well. Also, the Alaskan mill that we ordered for the Husqvarna is supposed to come in sometime next week. So hopefully sometime in the next couple of weeks, we'll have some content of running that Alaskan mill and my first experiences with it, which, as you guys know, if you've been with me for a while, it's bound to be entertaining. I mean, you know, something's definitely going to go wrong and we can all laugh at it, smile at it at the end of the day. Also, also, if you missed it, we launched the second channel, River Industry Adventures. Go over, check it out. Info card right here at the top, hopefully. Is it there? Did I put it there? Did I put it there? I think it's there. Go check that out, River Industry Adventures. It's got two Tobo flights in each video about five to six minutes long. There's one video up, and we're going to put a video up every Tuesday. So Captain Kleeman Sunday, tow boats on Tuesday, Captain Kleeman on Thursday. That'll be the rotation from here on out. So I hope all that makes sense. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took a lot of editing. By the way, you guys give Chelsea, my wife, a huge shout out. She ran the camera for a lot of these B-roll shots 
and it was awesome. She's never ran a camera for me before, and we just had a lot of fun doing it, so maybe something we do in the future. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you all on the next one.